All right, so in this problem, I have five to the power of x plus five to the power of x plus five to the power of x plus five to the power of x is equal to 1,000. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by factoring out 5 to the power of x from my left-hand side. Because as you can see, we have four of the same terms on my left-hand side. And the easiest way to go about the solving this equation is to factor them out. So I get 5 to the power of x times, well, 5 to the power of x divided by 5 to the power of x is simply 1. So I get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1,000. And now 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So I get 5 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1,000. Now, we want to isolate x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So then these two cancel out. And I get 5 to the power of x is equal to 1,000 divided by 4, which is 250. So from this large equation here, we got up to an equation that is significantly smaller. So we have 5 to the power of x equal 250. And just at first glance of this equation, we can tell that x is not going to be a whole number because we have 5 squared is 25, 5 to the power of 3 is 125, and 5 to the power of 4, this is going to be 125 times 5, which is 625. So the value of x is somewhere in between 3 and 4. Now to actually find the exact value of x, not just an estimate, what we're going to do is rewrite 250 as 25 times 10. And the reason I did this is because 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. So I get 5 squared times 10. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log of 5 to the power of x is equal to log of 5 squared times 10. And this is the same thing as, well, log a times b is equal to log of a plus log b. So log 5 squared times 10 is going to equal log of 5 squared plus log of 10. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this can equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 5 to the power of x. I can move x to the front. And I have log 5 to the power of 2. So I can move 2 to the front. And I get x times log of 5 is equal to 2 times log of 5 plus log 10. Now I'm going to divide both sides by log 5. So then these two cancel out. And I get x is equal to 2 times log 5 plus log 10 over log 5. Now, if you guys already know, log 10 is equal to 1. So now I get x is equal to 2 times log 5 plus 1 over log 5. And this is the same thing as 2 times log 5 over log 5 plus 1 over log 5. So now these two log 5's cancel out. So I get x is equal to 2 plus 1 over log 5. And although this is a, an exceptional answer, 
I'm, I want the exact answer, so I'm going to find the value of log 5. And log 5 is equal to zero point six nine nine meaning one divided by log of five is going to equal one point four three so two plus one point four three is three point one four three so I get three x is equal to three point one four three and this is my answer to this problem. And remember how we already said that x was going to be somewhere in between 3 and 4. So this proves us right. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have x to the power of 8 minus 121 is equal to 0. Now, what most people would think to do to solve this equation is add 121 on both sides. So then I would get x to the power of 8 equals 121. And then, since x is to the power of 8, take the 8th root on both sides to get an answer of the 8th root of 121. And this method is actually wrong because there are actually many more solutions than just two to this equation. There's many more. So we want to find all of these solutions to this equation. So how are we going to do that? Well, our first step is to rewrite x to the power of 8 as x to the power of 4 times 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 times 2 is equal to x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus 121, which we can rewrite as 11 to the power of 2. And the reason we're going to do that is so now we can use an important algebraic property that states that if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x to the power of 4 and b is 11. So I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 times x to the power of 4 minus 11, which is equal to 0. Now, from here, I get two equations. I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 is equal to 0, and x to the power of 4 minus 11 is equal to 0. And we are still not done yet, because to solve this equation, people are going to think, oh, add 11 on both sides and take the fourth root. But we're going to do the same thing that we did with our original equation. I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 4 as x to the power of 2 times 2. And now I can rewrite that as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And 11, I'm going to rewrite as the square root of 11 squared. So now I can use this property again. So I get x squared plus the square root of 11 times x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. And again, I get two equations. I get x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, and x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. Now, What I can do is 
for x squared minus the square root of 11 equals 0. I'm going to add the square root of 11 on both sides. So then these two cancel out. And I get x squared is equal to square root of 11. And now if I take the square root on both sides, square root of x squared is x. And the square root of the square root of 11 is the fourth root of 11. This is positive or negative. Now for x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, I'm going to subtract the square root of 11 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. So now I get the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative square root of 11. So the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of the negative square root of 11, I can write this as negative square root of square root of 11. So now this is the same. So now if I take the square root on both sides, I get the square root of x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. Or sorry, the square root of negative square root of 11, which I can rewrite as x is equal to the square root of negative 11 to the power of 1 half, which is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 half to the power of 1 half. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So I get x is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 fourth. Now going back here, I have x to the power of 4 plus 11 equals 0. So I can subtract 11 on both sides. And I get x to the power of 4 equals negative 11. Now I can take the fourth root on both sides. So I get x is equal to the fourth root of negative 11. And this is positive or negative. 